to understand the importance of theoretical perspective underlying culture, to know the importance of culture in understanding basic cognition, understanding the basic process underlying cultural psychology, and to know the areas of research in contemporary cultural psychology. Theoretical Perspectives of Cross-Cultural Psychology In this unit, we will cover the cross-cultural influences on cognition. Cognitive processes until recently have been studied as the universal physiological processes. However, there is now an overgrowing concern about the impact that culture has on cognition. Cultural influences are thinking, language skills, memory, learning abilities, etc. In this chapter, we will discuss the theoretical perspectives underlying cognition, culture and cognition. Beginning with the cognitive view of culture. Clockhorn defined culture as a patterned manner of thinking, feeling and reacting, which is acquired and communicated through symbols and embodied in artifacts. Hofstede defined culture as the set of mental programs that control an individual's response in a given context. The common thread running across these definitions is the emphasis on conceptualization of culture as a shared knowledge and the meaning systems of a group of people. Hofstede has also studied four dimensions of culture across 15 countries, namely collectivism versus individualism, power distance, uncertainty, avoidance, and masculinity versus femininity. Schein defined culture as a pattern of basic assumptions, invented, discovered, or developed by a given group, as it leads to cope with its problem of external adaptation and integral integration that has worked well enough to be considered valid and therefore to be taught to the new members as the correct way to perceive, think and feel in relation to those problems. Trindis et al. concluded that culture is a nebulous concept. Hence, basic definition of culture is a very difficult task. However, they have provided a basic definition. It is as follows. It is a behavioral and ideational system which is acquired and transmitted from generation to generation. It includes a multi-dimensional array of shared beliefs, norms, ontological assumptions and values of a particular group that are instantiated in everyday social practices and social institutions. Such fundamentals of culture comprise distinctive themes and dimensions which are often organized in response to important groups and societies. Culture has been mostly defined as the man-made part of the environment consisting of objective parts as well as subjective parts or groups characteristics of perceiving the environment. Dimensions of culture Cross-cultural studies from across 40 countries have shown that valid structures of specific culture types in particular contexts are prevalent. These represent different socially shared abstract ideas about what is good, right and desirable in our societies or in a culturally bound group within a nation. To be more specific, culture may be differentiated on the degree to which they value. 1. Conservatism, which is collectivism. The significance that people lay on the interdependence and surrounding of people in an intimate group. It is the extent to which they promote aspirations of the group. 2. Hierarchy. It is the extent to which the group laid meaning on the hierarchy and the structure of the group. This will impact the overall interaction of the group members and affect the distribution of the resources among the members. Third, mastery. This attributes weight importance to the extent to which the people actively alter the environment that can develop one's skill and help them to achieve in their lives. Fourth, autonomy, which is individualism. The magnitude with which one give importance to their personal interest and goal the level to which one has autonomy to live their lives. They display emphasis on competition, achievement and success. Few countries associated with such individualism are like USA and UK. It is further differentiated 
into A, affective autonomy which is valuing stimulation and hedonism and B, intellectual autonomy which is valuing flexible thinking and self-direction. Fifth, egalitarian commitment, the extent to which the society promotes welfare and commitment for the inhabitants and sixth, harmony, the significance that is laid on reception and preservation of the larger environment. Another value that can differentiate the culture includes tightness and looseness of the situational norms in the culture. Culture that have clear defined norms are reliable and impose far more restriction on the behavioral pattern that are suitable across wider range of the situation. For instance, like Japan and Germany are a form of tight cultures that exhibit fixed perceptions of situational norms. These cultures impose greater constraints in situations and behavior patterns that are suitable across a wide range of situations. These cultures show reduced tolerance within the interaction among the people. On the contrary, within USA and Thailand, there is a greater extent to variability in the perception of the situational norms. This increases range of behaviors across cultures. In such cultures, sanctioning systems are less well developed. Cultural psychology, basic concept. The APA defines cultural perspective as the psychological perspective that focus on cross-cultural differences in the causes and consequences of the behavior. This perspective has been gaining tremendous grounds in recent times. This perspective assumes special importance when we discuss the global interactive world of today. The world is diversifying with almost all the cultures in intimate contact with one another. Hence, cultural diversity and intercultural relations are some of the most important challenges faced by us. However, we can also view it as an opportunity. Opportunities that will help us actualize potential in all individuals and further result in a positive social evolution. Nowhere will this potential be actualized better than in the field like psychology. Psychology has two main goals. One, construct a compilation of knowledge about people. It includes assessment of behaviors such as when it happens, the grounds of why it happens so as to ensure the prediction of behavior can take place. This can be achieved by performing research and generating conjectures of behavior. Two, using the knowledge acquired through research in everyday lives. This intervention can improve the lives of people dealing directly with people's problems so as to affect their lives in a constructive manner. This is accomplished by the psychologist acting as therapist, counselors, trainers and consultants. Both these goals are interconnected. It is only by learning about the human behavior we can formulate theories and find application for these. It is learnt in academic surroundings but improvised in natural settings. Hence, it is imperative for us to understand that knowledge about human behavior cannot be acquired through studying in a single country or dominant culture or only in terms of physiological means. There is a need to understand the socio-cultural influences on psychology and how they can be used in the present day surroundings. As stated earlier, the focus of this unit is on the cognitive aspect of psychology. The American Psychological Association defines cognition as the process of knowing including attention, remembering and reasoning, also the content of processes such as the concepts and memories. In the next section, we discuss the theoretical background of cognitive science in brief. Theoretical background of cognitive science. The cognitive science revolution was born courtesy of participation of various human sciences, although independently of one another. The year of birth of cognitive turning point is considered to be 1956. It was facilitated by the works of Newell and Simon. Miller and Noam Chomsky, along with the many other prophylic personas. Here we discuss the emergence of cognitive anthropology which specializes in describing culture in their own conceptions, that is, describing other cultures from within. Classical cognitive anthropology has two goals. 
First, to discover how to designate the environmental phenomena considered important. Second, to ascertain how these designated phenomena are classified with respect to one another or which semantic properties are important for constructing models and describe the cognitive processes involved. Drawing from these goals, we can come with certain inferences. Firstly, the fact that culture of a society encompasses everything that one needs to know or believe in so that they can be accepted in the culture. It is the structure of the things that people have in mind, their models for perceiving, relating and interpreting them. Therefore, culture may be defined as a mental phenomena. Also, the knowledge system of a culture is implicit to be a conceptual model which embraces the organizational ideologies of a culture along with the behavior of its members. This model is like a cultural grammar, code of communicating or a set of rules. Continuing this process of thought, one can comprehend that culturally significant cognitive features must be communicable between persons in one of the standards symbolic systems of the culture. This is what links culture so intimately with language, a topic we will cover in greater details in the following chapters. However, there are certain problems associated with this. Many individual studies conducted were unable to attain the ambition of studying the collective knowledge. This was primarily due to the incorrect assumption that knowledge is static, firmly organized in characteristic domains, thereby ignoring the dynamic nature of knowledge completely. The studies were ignorant of the expression of knowledge in terms of actions and emotions having completely focused on language material. Once such problems were realized, the spotlight shifted to reproduce the human cognitive processes into the computer science model. This resulted in employment of the information processing model. A brief overview of information processing model is provided. The belief that cognitive processes in humans, animals and computer software were similar revolutionized the cognitive perceptions of culture too. Instead of focusing on culture as a whole, the center of attention became the average people who are involved in acquisition, storage and application of knowledge in their day-to-day -day activities. It became clear that many categories and semantic fields have no clear-cut boundaries. Thus, we see that cognition is no longer an expression of culture as a whole and abstracted from linguistic material, but understood as a mental activity of individuals who are actively applying knowledge in different contexts. This is further emphasized in the goals of cognitive psychology as defined by Berry and Dasson. One, to transport our present hypotheses and laws to other cultural settings, to test their applicability or generalizability. Two, to explore new cultural systems to discover cognitive variations and differences we have not experienced within our own cultural contexts. And three, to compare our prior understanding with our near knowledge within diverse cultures to generate more universal descriptions, hypotheses and laws of human cognitive function. The second goal was even then recognized to be more important than the first. This enables us to understand the dual goals of cross-cultural psychology, that is, understanding the local experiences while at the same time attempting to make pan-human generalizations. Cross-cultural research. In the past, much of the research has been done in the United States with the focus primarily on Western, educated, industrialized, rich and democratic cultures. Cultural psychology seeks to reverse this trend by using cross-cultural research as the principal research method for testing cultural considerations of psychological information. It entails participants of diverse cultural milieu as to evaluate the findings acquired across different cultures. This method enables psychologists to scrutinize the manner in which the knowledge about one individual and their behavior from one culture differs from that of the other culture, thereby contributing to the field of cultural psychology. As a method, this can be understood as a scientific philosophy. That is, it is the logic underlying which methods should be used 
to conduct research and generate knowledge related to psychology. The important fields in which cross-cultural psychology needs further development are 1. The cultural structuring of child development 2. Socialization and identity strategies 3. Human development in culture across lifespan The cultural structuring of child development The previous research consideration of anthropology and psychology have discovered three recurrent conceptualization of the cultural environment and its relation to the development of a child. First is the framework of daily routines of a child encompassing a huge cast of characters each illustrating a pre-assigned role and task. Second environment is defined as commonly shared practices significant to the child that facilitates the child to get interwoven into a multi-standard fabric of the person and the environment. Third, the environment is not just perceived as a manifestation of settings and actions, but its values as ideas guiding the child's care are also taken into consideration. The focus of child development in different cultural settings has been illustrated in the work of John and Beatrice Whitings. Their work has addressed the manner in which the cultural environment affects the social behavior of a child. They concluded that the behavior of a child reflects the interaction with the people, places where maximum time is spent and the roles that have been assigned. For example, girls were likely to be closer to home, take up mother-directed activities in company of adult females, toddlers and babies, etc. Environment has been viewed as a communicative medium with the individuals and contexts interacting with each other. Historically, the focus was on the messages from the environment to the child. Now this is changing. The cultural messages are contained in everyday behavioral routines. The difference lies in the content of the message and participating across different cultures. In other important areas of research lies in the parental ethno theories or the parents' cultural belief systems. Most important contribution has been made by Levin's theory of parental goals. The theory assumes that in addition to household tasks, the parents also endow the child with anticipation of the future. This is reflected in the nutrition studies conducted across the goal where cultural beliefs about nutrition have a dramatic and very literal life and death impact. Thus we conclude that culture plays an imperative role in the development of the child. Next, socialization and identity strategies. There is a paradigm shift in the conception of socialization in today's world than in the times of Durkheim, Freud and Piaget. This can be attributed to the decline of influence exerted by religion, new orientation of values and a change from collective to individual morality. The cross-cultural studies have thus widened the perspective in the study of socialization and identity. Socialization can be considered a totality of modification produced in the individual's relation with the environment due to their interaction with others. This can be done by the process of internalization of values of society, forming a mental picture which then serves as a point of reference for future use. Some agents of socialization are imitation, identification, play, role taking, language, acquisition and contact with books, media and other forms of learning. Contrary to the Durkheim perspective, the present conception of socialization includes the effect of the surroundings on the individual as well as the effect of the individual on the surroundings. Recent developments show that culture has been ceased to be an all-embracing amalgamating system in modern society. Culture has started exhibiting more general attitudes, principles of conduct and global schemes of action instead of demonstrating explicit features. This empowers people to be the object of knowledge instead of simply being immersed in the socio-cultural context due to which the culture being given differs sharply from the culture being experienced. This exposure is also provided to the traditional societies, permitting them to have a social imagination along with the social reality. Human development in culture across lifespan The conventional focus of developmental psychology has been on the childhood wherein the cultural meaningfulness has been mostly ignored. However, the role of culture as standard semiotic organization 
of both intra and interpsychological functions can no longer be ignored the perspective which takes into account the meaningfulness of joint construction of the person and the social world is called co-constructionist perspective it means that people have the ability to construct their own psychological development by meaningful actions at some point in their lives this view is supported by erickson who considered culture an integrated and fundamental part of the multifarious causal operating in the life of every individual contemporary research focuses on the context related conception of psychology this is in line with the culture inclusive lifespan development of psychology there are two directions by which culture promulgating advances can be incorporated with the lifespan tradition first in theory conventional cross cultural psychology could incorporate comparison between life course periods across different national and ethnic communities the major limitation to such studies however would be the inability to inform the study of lifespan development psychology because of heavy inference from the non developmental perspective as well the second would involve systematic examination of person culture interface along the lines propagated by the cultural psychologist it is argued that ecological context allows the interaction of individuals with contextual aspects this helps in acknowledgement of the role of the individual within the society thus an agreement can be seen between cross cultural psychologists and development theorists they both demonstrate that development is primarily a contextualized phenomena which acknowledges the possibility of individually unique multidirectional routes thus we have seen the different conception of culture as well as the contemporary researches carried out other important aspect of research will be elaborated in the following chapters summary culture has been uniquely defined by the different psychologists as well as sociologists the cultural dimensions have been described by hofstede schrandes and schwartz etc cultural perspective is defined as the psychological perspective that focuses on cross cultural differences in the causes and the consequences of behavior the goals of psychology include the compilation of knowledge of human behavior constructing theories and utilizing these theories and knowledge in everyday lives cognitive psychology has now started incorporating the aspects of cultural anthropology within its framework in the past much of psychological work was done in the western educated industrialized rich and democratic countries much of the cross cultural studies are now being done on the topics such as the cultural structuring of child development socialization and identity strategies human development in culture across lifespan